Hello, my name is Jake Thornton. I'm a former White Dwarf editor and a game designer. Uh, on Mythic Battles Pantheon, I am the voice of the Olympus. Um, I came to this project in a slightly sideways way. Uh, I originally was talking to Leo. I, I, I met Leo when he was editor of Ravage, uh, doing, it, doing interviews for games I designed myself. And uh, he, he got in touch with me and said we'd be interested in, in uh, a game I was working on and some, some other games that you know, we, we had some ideas together and so on. So we were talking about game designs and I, I came over to see them and they told me they were doing this game called Mythic Battles and so naturally I said, can I play? So uh, we were sitting there playing this game, I was having a chat about it and it's really good. And so we, I got more and more involved in this and they asked me if I wanted to do some help with the English language community and on Kickstarter and things like that. And I had some ideas about how we might take the idea of Kickstarter and updates and the way we talk to the backers in the middle of the, uh, the, the campaign. Um, and I thought that it was kind of, it felt like to, that it was an idea that was, there was an opportunity that was being missed. And so I thought, well, let's see if we can run with this and I can do something. And then having explained this idea, they said, great, why don't you do it? <laughs> so I went for, I wasn't, uh, you know, I was just sort of thinking of his, this is something that somebody should do and uh, ended up ended up being volunteered for it myself. And so this is a, you know, it's a, it's a departure for me. It's not what I usually do, but I normally design games. Um, but this is working with, with a really nice game that someone else has designed and uh, it's, it's good fun. It's, it's, a, it's a very attractive game visually. Uh, there's gorgeous artwork and very nice models. One of the things I particularly like about the way it looks on the tabletop is the fact that the gods are huge and the humans, the normal mortals, are, uh, norm so it's a 28 millimeter scale game. The normal humans are 28 millimeter scales, 28 millimeter, 30, 30 millimeter scale. But the gods are three times their height. And this is, um, as an as a archeologist, this is what you look at when you're looking at an historian. You look at these ancient pictures and vase paintings and wall paintings and the gods are this big and the mortals are this big. And that's what we've done. That's what the miniatures in, in uh, Mythic Battles are. That's what they look like. And so it looks like this sort of how, how the ancients thought of the gods, how the ancients thought of these creatures. The, it looks right. And it's really nice to see that on the tabletop. So I like the visual aspect of it. I think it really looks cool. Um, in the gameplay, I think it's, it's been quite, it's quite nicely done because as, as, uh, as I'm sure Benoit will tell you, um, it's a mixture of card play and dice play and miniatures and different aspects. And it's that mixture which gives you lots of opportunities as a player to influence the outcome, to have a plan and then make that plan happen. And it's, as a player, it's interesting for me to, to be able to say, well, I can take this one god and then because of the combinations and the synergies of the different creatures, I can play five games and have very, very different games by picking different things to go with it. And, and that allows me then, because the choice of figures, when you build your force, the choice of figures affects the combination of cards you have in your hand. The combination of cards you have in your hand affects the way you can play the game, the way you play your cards and the powers you've got with your creatures. Uh, affects the type of attacks you do and when you roll the dice you've got different things you can do to manipulate that and there's so many things you can do each of the rules is very simple individually but the way they interact gives you a great deal of depth and um, we've been watching each other filming so i know what some of the other people have said Erwan made a very good point which is that um this it's the synergies and the combos and that as you play you start out and you think this is this is a simple set of rules which it is you think it's dead, dead, dead simple, you put it on the table, you move it around. But as you think about it, you think, oh, if I'd only had this model with that model, then I could have done something else. If I'd kept these together or kept these apart, then I could have done something different. Oh, next time I'll take that model and, instead of this one, and they work better together. Because although they're strong individually, this particular combination is even more strong together. And you learn those combinations as you go along. And I think this is, again, this is one of the great values of Kickstarter. Kickstarter allows the game to actually develop as big as it possibly can. Every time you add another miniature, another unit, another model to the game, you add 
that multiplied by all the things that are already there in terms of combinations that are possible. And so it's not just adding one more figure, it's adding one more figure that can work with four different gods and 20 different monsters and heroes and units and so on. And the combinations of even just one or two extra things is, is amazing. So the idea of a Kickstarter where we can keep adding things as long as you are helping us make the game bigger, we can make the game more exciting and more exciting and more exciting as long as you're willing to come on the ride. And it's a great, it's, a perfect, uh, it's the perfect medium for the, for the plan. What is my favorite god? Uh, I'm not very good at picking one. The one I started with was Athena because I like the idea of Athena. She is uh, a strategist. She allows lots of flexibility and lots of, lots of interaction. Unfortunately, I keep getting her killed because I'm not a good enough player to make her work efficiently. Um, Ares is dead simple. You run up and you punch people because he's very good at that. He's a god of war. He hits people very hard. Ares, uh, Athena is much more clever. In, if I had to pick as a abstract across the whole lot, I actually quite like the idea of the more, of the less obvious gods like Aphrodite and Hera, who are weak physically, but do strange things to the way the game works. And Benoit's done a very nice job of bringing the unique qualities and the, the purpose of each god to the table. So Hera, for example, she's the weakest of the gods. But, and she's the, the goddess of fertility and, and the family and so on, which is very much not what you really want to be in a fight. But she's the one who started the whole thing by letting the Titans out again. So, well, I mean, you could argue that it's Zeus's fault. But anyway, she, she seems like a really interesting character to play in a skirmish game because she is still a god. She's still very much more, more powerful than immortal. But among the gods, she's not powerful. But because she's the goddess of fertility, she gets a bigger army because she's got more people. She has, you know, she's also the goddess of vengeance, so woe betide anyone that hurts her. And you get all these sort of interesting different ways. It's not just about having a bigger sword, having more attack dice. There's lots of different things. So I quite like that sort of aspect. So I think I'm going to pick Hera.